Hi, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia. Um, lockdown number 15, 16, 17, 18, whatever it is. Days sort of go by now, so um, uh, I'm sure it's the same for everybody and we all just find things to do. Um, I've been building last week a lot of pedestals as well as doing some of these videos. Uh, so I have 12 new pedestals I built for my showroom. Um, and I told you in the last or the last but one video that I would tell you how to make them because I came up with a design a long time ago, uh, 30, 40 years ago, I guess it was, um, of some pedestals that are light and easy to transport but fairly durable because you can stand on them. Uh, anyway, um, here is the actual pedestal without the top. Um, and if you can see, there are one inch um, long verticals, four of them with pieces of quarter inch plywood, which we call Luan, um, that slot into each one. Um, and as I said, when you put this vertically on the ground and put a base on it, you can stand on it. I've done it. So, uh, so they're very strong and um, pretty durable and if you paint them varnish them whatever i have pedestals that are like 30 odd years old um maybe what 1986 85 or 86 i built them and they're still going you just have to keep painting them um so what it is i'm going to take one of these apart let's see if i can I, I, you can see that there are slots basically notched out of it. It's a long vertical uh, and there are two slots notched out and I did this on a table saw. The width of the blade uh, I think is about an eighth of an inch and this is quarter inch Luan plywood. So I would run it through the, the table saw all the way along and do all my verticals at once, you know, hundreds of feet when I'm building 12 pedestals um, and then basically move the the fence a little bit further out maybe another quarter uh, not another eighth of an inch maybe just under an eighth of an inch uh, so that I run all the wood through again and then it gives me a quarter inch little notch right out let's take it right up so you can see it close it's a quarter inch notch basically and then the plywood if you, you do two obviously so you have an outer edge there where you don't see that notch and then it just simply slots in to your quarter inch plywood as tight as you want it to be. So I make it fairly tight. You just have to play with the fence to get it that tight. Um, and then you glue it all the way along and you do four sides, four verticals, and it obviously stands up. And I got one on the wrong way around there. So let's take that around so you can see that one there. And so once you've got your four sides on and the four verticals all glued together, uh, it will actually make a nice strong pedestal. Very simple um, and they, if you put marine varnish on you can use them outdoor for craft fairs. They weigh nothing. I mean they're just um, really, you know, lift, just easy to move around. This is a small one. I have got some that are four feet high uh, and they still weigh nothing. I mean you can actually make them so they uh, nest inside each other too. So if you have a four foot pedestal then a, uh, at uh, say 14 inches square at the top, so you just need a square, uh, and then you do a 12 inch one and a 10 inch one. You can actually put them inside each other to transport to craft fairs, which is what I did for years. Okay, so I kept my promise, I told you how to do it. All right, okay, so today um, I'm going to try slowing myself down because I'm um, slowly filling up my studio with lots and lots of pottery since we're not allowed to sell. Uh, at the moment we can't open the shop um, so I've just been storing all my pots um, and boxing them up and but I'm I have a lot more to box up uh, from the last week or so so I'm going to do some mugs today that are um, painted with my black slip underglaze mix of slip and underglaze on the surface and do my black and white carvings which I think if you look on my website you'll be able to see uh, so let's clean my wheel up it's actually really sunny today. We've actually had, like I said last week, we had that really big storm. Um, 
100 kilometer winds, so it's about 65, 70 km, uh, mile an hour winds. Uh, it lasted a day and a night. Um, fortunately, no damage anywhere. The power didn't even go out. All right, so I'm going to treat you like beginners. Um, and I've got some advanced people on this, so please bear with me. Um, I cut an entire block of clay, 25 pounds, into uh, 28 small blocks of clay. So they're all just under a pound. And I don't bang these into a ball. I think you've seen that before. So dry, clean my wheel off. It's a bit damp. Bang it down so that it sticks to the wheel head. It won't stick to a dry wheel head, remember. So you've got to dampen the wheel head first. But there's no surface water. Then resting on the splash pan, wet it, both hands, and put one over the top and one to the side and put some pressure on but I always do it so you can see half the ball of clay and you just put enough pressure on to seal it down on to the wheel head. <laughs> you can't see, can you? All right, let's move that down again. There you go. All right, here you go. Now you can see what I'm doing. So it was off center before. Now, do now I don't have a head anyway, but there you go. Now when you're centering it first, it's good to just practice that part. So knock it off center again. Put your hand halfway over the ball, other hand there, resting on the splash pan, either side. So you really got some solid kind of structure to your body. And you lean with this hand resting on the wheel head, so you can see it cleans the wheel head. You see that? Yep. And then basically the other hand, I put my thumbs together like that. And then I put pressure on, on the top, but I can see half the ball of clay. And because the thing is spinning fairly fast, every bit of that clay gets underneath my hands and it forms a little mold that I make with my hands. So I'm just trying to make a mold with my hands and make the clay confined to that. So knock it off center again. Put your hand down over the top and a lot of pressure. If you don't put enough pressure on, your hands are going to keep wobbling like that. So it is just pressure and strength. You have to make sure you force the clay into that mold. So that's what I'm doing, my hands like that. And I can see half the ball of clay. So there are other ways of centering, but that's the way I've done it. So that's what I'm showing you. So it's off center, make the mold in your hands, apply the pressure and just hold it for a second or two till it stops wobbling and then let go. You can also cone. So make the ball of clay, make a little ice cream cone upside down and then press back down. So a lot of potters like to do that. If the clay is inconsistent, I would do that too. But because this is brand new clay, out of the box, cut up, I don't need to do that. And then you center it so it looks like a, I'm in Canada, so it looks like a hockey puck. All right. So how do you put a hole in? I do it by steadying my hand. This one stays where it was when it was centering. And this finger goes to the center. Feel for the center. Just make a little dimple. If you're a beginner, you shouldn't go for it. You should get some more water. Fill it up. And then using your middle finger, feeling for that center, just press down and pull across to your other hand. And let go. So you end up down and pulling the same height all the way across. A lot of people make the mistake of basically lifting their finger a little bit. If you're making a bowl, that's not a mistake. But if you're doing a mug, you need a flat bottom. So basically down and pull over to the side. Then I always, this is a really good tip, put your finger across to the other side. So this is what I did. And then I put my finger over to the other side right there and I press my fingernail in right at the bottom and in the wall area and pull it back to the center. It does two things. It compresses the bottom and it actually puts my fingernail under the wall of the clay a little bit. So you end up with that really strong, you can see it in the picture as well, I end up with a strong kind of groove that sticks out a bit. So when I do the pull, my fingertip can go under there and lift the wall up. Okay, so important next step, you wet both the, and a good way to do it is to get a sponge. I see people splashing it, but if you just aim for the rim and dribble your sponge right on the rim, the water goes both sides of the actual wall. All right, now this is very important too. If you actually push with your outside finger, the clay goes in. If you push with your inside finger, the clay goes out, but it doesn't get taller. 
So what are we going to try and do? We're going to wet both sides again. And then you put your fingertips inside under that groove and on the outside right at the bottom, right touching this plastic and you start bringing your fingers up with pressure on from both sides, but more pressure from the outside fingers. And it gets taller. And then put your finger right on the top rim to compress the clay again. If you're interested in the clay body, this is Laguna Clay Company's B-Mix. It's one of my favorite clay bodies. Okay, fingertips can go right down to the middle now and be touching the wall right on the inside. And these fingers can go where they were at the beginning and put pressure on and come up. So these fingers can actually just go in like that, but it's hard to put them sideways like that. So you're just gonna have to go down and touch the very bottom at the beginning and these fingers can go like that. So when I'm doing the pull, my fingertips will go together like that. All right, so they're not flat like that, they're at an angle like that, like that, and pulling up. All right, so watch what happens. More pressure with the outside fingers. and it gets taller. Once again, compress the rim. There we go. I'm getting a little vibration on this wheel and this is a Shimpo Whisper. It's probably the bat, the plastic bat on the top. All right, I cleaned all my tools. You can't see them in the picture, but all right. Rib, wooden one. This is so old, it's been worn away over the years and I love it. Favorite tool, best friend kind of thing. So, Okay, so I put a groove right underneath with my finger just resting on top of the rib so it creates that little gap underneath but a little flap hanging out. I put my finger against that flap and put the tool right there so it gives me a foot. Now I don't need to trim this piece now because I already have a foot on the piece. So I've, in the past, if I'm rushed, I will just sponge the bottom after I've finished the piece and it's actually finished but I do trim them usually. So once again, some water on the rim so it dribbles both sides. <coughs> and then using this rib, the metal one, put your hand inside and drag the rib on the surface, but push out with your fingertips from the inside. And you can get your really straight side on this mug. I'm gonna make a bunch of straight cylinders I've actually got 28 balls of clay here to throw, so I won't bore you with all of them. But when I'm doing my black and white carved pieces, which are scraffito carved, it takes uh, an hour or two to carve a mug. Uh, sometimes longer, but usually about no more than two hours, I won't, wouldn't say. Um, and it's easier to carve a nice flat cylindrical surface, although it's not impossible to carve other surfaces. I just dragged all the water off and then I've shown you in other videos. I have these tools which I made that compress the rim. The rubber band has to be loose stretched between there though. And that replaces the leather um, basically. So um, I can never find in my wheel. So it's somewhere around as well. I have a leather too. But these ones I use the green rubber bands from Laguna Clay Company uh, and they actually don't get lost because the, the rubber band is green. So you can do that. It just compresses a little bit. This one I made, after I made the other one, I angled the cut a little bit. So this one has a nicer way of folding over the rim. But you don't need to do it if uh, you're using soft clay. Not soft clay, smooth clay. All right, so that looks like it's a decent shape. It's they always kind of look. I think it's got a slight curve to it still though. You can kind of just about see it. So what I'm going to do is compress with the rib and push out just at that middle area up at just above halfway. There you go. That's a bit nicer. So if there was grit in this clay, this would compress the grit down a little bit. That's all. Okay, getting the piece off the wheel. Dribble some water. My wheel's on a slope. I'm in a boat building, basically. Um, this building was built 120 years ago, so the whole thing is slow sloping. 
but you can pull through once or twice that way and it will lift off easily. Lift your fingers like that and place it down on a bat. There you go. Clean your wheel head and leave that little piece of clay in the center but drag the water off it. Bang your next piece of clay without getting any water in between. And bang it down, round it off just a touch and start again. So basically, this hand is wet, this hand is wet, the piece is wobbling, so you put pressure on, rest your elbows on your thighs and on the splash pan, and put enough pressure on so it compresses the clay and makes it fit that little mold in your hands. Same again. I'm gonna move it up a little bit, push it back down a bit. If you give it a little movement, it helps to get the piece really sort of smooth, so you, can, you don't feel any ripples in the clay. And then when it's not wobbling, you let go slowly. <coughs> okay, so press down, feel for that little center bit, drag some water into that, push down, pull across, and let go slowly. Put your fingertip opposite, make a groove under the wall, and pull it back to the center. You've got a flat base and a little groove to start the pull from. Fingertips underneath that groove, fingertips on the outside. Do your first pull, chase the wet spot that's above your fingers. Let go slowly, put some pressure on the rim. It compresses it down again. Get some water, dribble it right on the rim so it goes inside and outside. Fingertips down, fingertips on touching on the outside. I always pull my finger across so both hands are connected. Start the pull. And you try not to touch the wall above where your fingertips are doing the pull, because sometimes you can accidentally let your finger touch the wall above you where you're doing the actual pressure, and it will dry the clay out a little bit and you'll get a dry spot. So be careful that you don't do that. It's like playing the guitar. You try and do a chord and you're touching another string with a finger you don't realize about, and you make a mistake. Okay, so same again. This is a third pull. I usually only do two pulls. This is a third pull, because this clay felt a little bigger in weight so I can make a slightly bigger mug. And that goes slowly, put some pressure on the rim. I've got this rib again. Underneath, makes the groove underneath. Turn it around. Make that foot. Here's a little one that I made that's different. It's actually a throwing rib. But I cut the end off. And if you can see, I made two grooves in the actual rib so that if I wanted to, I don't use this very often anymore, you can place that on there, put some pressure on, and it will give you two boom, boom, boom kind of thing to make a decorative foot. It's another way of doing a nice foot. I have another one of those somewhere around that's smaller. <clears throat> so you can make different size bumps, basically. Okay, I'm dragging the water out now. I'm going to use my rib still. This one was such a good pull there on the third pull, I don't hardly have to do anything. But I'm just taking that surface water off the upper air. Let just a little bit of clay off the surface. If the rim needs it. Put a little pressure on with that rubber band. Take a look, pretty good. I don't have a mirror opposite this. A lot of people say I should have a mirror. Anyway, dribble some water around. I'll show you how another way of pulling them off the wheel. As soon as you've got the water around, start the wheel going slowly and pull the wire through slowly and it will pull your pot. And then I let it go right to the other end where I can now put the pot on my fingers, spread my fingers out, and place it down. I'm going to put three mugs on a bat here, because I'm going to airbrush these and spray them black right after I get the handles on. All right. I'll do one more so I'm not boring you too much. Okay, leave the clay on without getting water in between. Bang it down. 
so it's kind of round, roundish. Wet it, both hands. Make the mold in between your hands. So make it go fast with a wheel head speed. The speed for centering is a lot faster than the speed for pulling a wall. So push in to make it taller, push down to make it flatter, then make that hockey puck. As long as it stays moist, I don't need to get more water. If it dries out, you have to get more water. It's always about keeping it wet so it doesn't stick to your fingers. <coughs> make the groove, sorry, the hollow. Fill it full of a bit of water. Push down and pull across, but keep your finger the same distance from the bat. So you make a flat wall, make the little groove opposite, pull your finger to the edge. That's compressing the base, basically. Okay, sponge with some water, dribble it right over the rim, both sides inside and out. <coughs> Fingertips, put pressure on, more pressure with the outside fingers, and you bring it to the top. And then put your finger down on the top rim to flatten it. Dribble the water on the rim, inside and out. Same again. See how my hands are attached to each other? And there's a gap between my fingertips. And when you get to the top, let go slowly. Put the pressure on the rim to flatten the rim again. Groove underneath. My finger pushes back a little bit on top of the rib just to stop that from making a very sharp, thin piece of clay. And then put that over the top. So you've got this foot already made in the piece. I'm gonna wet my hand and put it inside again. And use the rib, the metal rib, just to kind of touch the clay surface and you press out with your inside fingers to, against the rib edge. And it actually drags the smooth, slippery, wet clay off the surface on the outside and makes a cylinder. I will make other shape mugs, but um, I'll do that in another video for you at some point. There's so many mugs that you can make. You don't have to just make cylinders, but I've always made this cylinder with the carved pieces. And it's kind of a large cylinder too. It's not a normal size mug. Okay, so that's it. I'll show you this one. I usually take them off the way I just showed you, which is just letting it turn slowly. You just have to make sure you don't speed the wheel up. All right, so I got three. They're all a little different in size, but they're just basic cylinders. That one's got a nice little edge there to it. I didn't even see that when I took it off, but just a little, a little interest on the rim. Um, so um, this was just a video to show basics of throwing a cylinder. Um, and uh, I'm trying to do something. There you go. I'm trying to do something, you know, several times a week. Um, we're actually, uh, you know, getting used to this quietness. Um, and uh, and it's lucky we live right on the water because we can get out and have a nice walk. I hope you guys all have somewhere nice to walk as well for your exercise. And I hope you're really practicing the social distancing. It does feel like we're getting this under control. Um, in many parts of the world, it's, it's not so under control. I hope you guys are safe where you are. Um, and uh, I would say just if you've got a studio, make pottery. If you don't, do drawing and painting, read books if you, that's your thing, um, but do something creative and um, there's so much on the internet that you can do. I love Chinese painting just with black ink, um, that would be great, I should try more of that myself on my pots. But um, so anyway, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia, it is sunny today, alright, so in, enjoy wherever you are, alright, and take care, be careful.